Hello, hello, dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to have a look at how to repair an alternator of this generator. This is a six, a six cylinder, very large generator with a 28 volt electrical system. The charging system of the alternator is not functioning, so the owner of this generator has complained frequent battery drain. We are going to evaluate performance of the alternator and see if it is to be repaired. Well, first thing first, we start the generator and measure the alternator output at the battery. Let's see. Let's measure the battery voltage to see if the charging system is working or not. As you can see now, we are connecting the multimeter leads to the battery and battery is reading 24.1. Engine is running, so the battery is still reading 24.8. As you can see on the generator controller, engine is running with a 28 volt system. It is reading 24 volt. That means the charging system is not working. So we are going to identify if the problem is with the alternator, measure the voltage at the alternator as well. Same thing happens, 24.1 volt. So we are going to remove the alternator to evaluate and repair. Removing the alternator is very straightforward. Just remove the mounting and the tensioner bolts and then take out the belt and then remove the alternator from the engine assembly. Whenever you are repairing electrical parts like this, always make sure that you have disconnected the battery. Always disconnect the battery because that will be that will help you avoid risk of shorting electric. Now the battery is disconnected. Alternator is loose. Let's take out the belt and then we'll remove the alternator and we will evaluate. As you can see, this is a, an IC regulator type alternator where all the regulator and the electrical generation is taken care of inside the alternator. On some old generators, alternator will only produce electricity and a separate regulator is installed. But for this particular alternator, as you can see on the back side of the alternator, the regulator is attached to it. So it has an inbuilt alternator regulator. It has an inbuilt excitation. It has an inbuilt field generator. Now it's taken out, as you can see that black part on the back, it contains the brush and the regulator assembly as a unit. Now what we are going to do is we are going to evaluate if there are any electrical short circuits or not. Measuring the continuity between the battery positive and uh, the body will tell if the diodes are okay or not. In one direction it should provide continuity when the swap, when swapping the multimeter probes it should not be continuous that is exactly what happened so that indicates the alternator diodes are okay now we are going to see if the brush and the regulator are functioning or not well as you can see the brushes are already gone only only the spring are there the carbon brush and the wiring of the carbon brush is damaged so brushes are damaged the link is good but the wire of the the wire that attaches the carbon brush to the regulator assembly is disconnected it means there is no continuity from the regulator to the rotor. Now let's see the rotor winding, if it is okay or not. We're going to measure continuity between the two slip rings. As you can see, when measuring the continuity, there is no continuity. It is reading infinity. That means there is a broken rotor winding. So we are going to disassemble. In order to figure out if there is no continuity, it should be disassembled and the rotor should be inspected alone. Now, after disassembling, as you can see, there is no continuity still. So, the slip rings are not continuous, which means the alternator rotor winding is disconnected somehow. Let's remove the bearings and see if there is... Let's remove the bearing and see what is going on. For that, we need a puller. So, you can see here, right, we are pulling out the bearing from the alternator shaft. That's a very tight fit. Now, the surprising part is once the bearing is removed, see this. This is really never seen anything like this before. The slip ring is totally disconnected from the shaft. The slip ring is totally connected from the winding. It's total damage. As you can see, the alternator slip ring is totally damaged. So it needs new parts. We are going to replace the brush because as you have seen previously the brush have totally disconnected from the regulator these wires are broken 
the carbon links is good but the wires are disconnected so we're going to install this in the regulator simply insert this in place of the brush holder and then solder it at the back that will fix it but for the slip ring the slip ring has to be repaired actually if you have a replaceable slip ring replace the slip ring as a whole if you don't have you can fill the gap between the shaft and the slip ring and then reinstall the slip ring that is already installed for this particular alternator we are replacing the brush then soldering will fix it once it is soldered then the extra wire has to be trimmed off by doing so we can simply fix the alternator brush right here you see me soldering the alternator carbon brush assembly Now once the alternator brush and uh, their connections are done, we are going to reinstall the brush and regulator assembly. The slip ring and the entire assembly is already installed. Once that is done, we are going to reinstall the alternator. That will be then finally we are going to test performance of the alternator assembly by measuring battery voltage once the engine is started. Or because this is installed on a diesel generator. The genset controller can display the amount of voltage that is going to be output from the alternator. So this is the final touch. We are going to install the regulator and slip ring assembly. Then final testing. Moment of truth. Now look. The slip rings are replaced and new brushes are installed. Let's see the final result. Now engine is not started. Let's crank and see the engine. Once you see the RPM increasing on the generator set, on the right side there is an RPM that is reading zero right now. Once the preheat timer has reached and the engine is started, the alternator will start producing voltage. As you can see now the cranking voltage has reduced a little. Now we are on 27 volt which indicates that the alternator is now charging and it's running in good condition. Because this is a 24 volt system, we normally expect somewhere around 28 volt. If you happen to have 28 volt, if you have happened to have a voltage in the vicinity of 28 volts, it means the charging system is running nice, alternator is functioning well, and the regulator is also doing its job. For this particular generator, problem is solved. The charging system has resumed functioning and the generator and the alternator are good to go. If you want to confirm that reading, you can also do the test by measuring voltage on the battery itself. Once the engine is started and the generator is running, measure voltage at the battery positive and negative. That will confirm function of the charging system. Right here you can see 27.8 volts, which is nearly 28 volts of charging voltage is taking place which indicates that the charging system is working nice. Well, that is all we have for you in this presentation. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new here, do consider subscribing and turn on notifications so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.